folks. Trains are crashing, bombs bursting in air, banks are starting to crash. Folks, it's happening. We're in the final days. We're in the end time. We're going to do a show today. Doc is in the studio. We have a DVD here that Doc put out called Seven Indicators of the End Times. We're going to give you seven things that Jesus said would happen or be happening at the end time. And you're going to find that we're there. So get some popcorn, get you some coffee, call your neighbors. Don't miss the show today. Stand by. And thanks for joining us today. I'm your host, Brother Dan Goodwin, sitting with me as always, Dr. Charles Hiltabittle, our co-host. Uh, as you can see here, we have a DVD set up here. Um, Doc has got a, a brand new DVD that's out, uh, Seven Indicators of the End Times. And we're going to be uh, looking at this today and sharing some things out of it. Uh, let me read a little bit of the back. Doc, it's 45 minutes, this DVD. Uh, a live presentation before a church audience recorded and edited by professional videographers. The presentation has over 40 PowerPoint slides, which are also provided in a separate listing that you can get right off of the DVD here. It uh, comes from the Olivet Discourse found in Luke chapter 21. I'm going to read some of that in just a minute. Um, Doc says there are no signs for the rapture, but if we can see the signs Jesus gave concerning his second coming, then the rapture obviously is near. Yes. Our prayer is that this will be informative and motivational and not frightening. As believers, we will be raptured before the tribulation, which precedes his physical second coming. And we need to be aware of these things. Yes. And uh, Doc, I'm uh, excited about this. Because this is this is where we're living right now. We're these, we're these there in the yes, list sir. here. Um, these seven these seven same things I guess could be found in Matthew twenty four. The same not the not exactly the same way, but Luke puts them in a little different. Luke was a doctor, so he puts things kind of in a yeah. sequential order. Matthew was speaking to the Jews about their king. Yeah, so. Well, let me read a little bit of Luke chapter 21 here. Uh, this is verses 8 through 11. All seven of these indicators are mentioned here. Yes. Uh, let me just read uh, some of this. And he said, Take heed that ye be not deceived. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. And the time draweth near. Go ye not therefore after them. So let's stop there, because that's our first one on the list, yes. isn't it? Yes. False teachers, deceivers. Yes, deceivers. We're living in those days, and we, we're watching as we get a little closer to the end of this age. Uh, let's say, let's back up a couple of decades. Over the last 20 or so years, progressively we're watching more and more deception in yeah. Christianity. Not just in America, but it's a worldwide deception. And what's going to happen is what we're seeing, I believe, is a precursor to what's going to be in the early days of the tribulation. Because after the rapture, the Holy Spirit won't be working and there won't be any believers left behind with verse, an influence. Because that verse says, he that letteth will let until he be taken That's right. out of the world. That's the Holy Spirit that indwells That's us. That's right, 2 Corinthians when chapter 2. When we go, yes. He goes with us That's and right. that work of well, he, doesn't, he doesn't leave, but, he, but in the life of the indwelled believer, right. which right now has an impact on culture and society. Right. Uh, so what's happening is the closer we get to the second coming of the Lord, more and more deception. And that's why the Lord said in Luke, uh, I believe 18, verse 18, He said, when, when He returns shall he find faith on the earth yeah. because it's becoming so convoluted uh, as you often say um, more and more supposed translations of the Bible become more watered down it's not that there's not any truth in it but the truth has been so watered down and it's been altered and so what the first thing he points out is 
there will be false teachers and false ministers. And he said, don't go after them. And uh, I know a lot of people say, well, that's, this was all fulfilled before uh, uh, at the uh, 70 AD. That's what a lot of people think. Yeah. But they say, well, this has only to do with the, uh, uh, with, with the disciples themselves. Well, no, this is talking about before the second coming because he's answering the question concerning it, that what they had about his second coming. That's right. And so we're, one of the very first things he points out is that one of the indicators that's going to be, I'm convinced, is the rise of false ministries, false teachers, false doctrine, uh, and the list goes on as you're seeing it in our and world we're today. The, we are that generation. I'm convinced I mean, we are. I mean, obviously there's always been people yes. that were false teachers, but never in the magnitude of how it is today. Right. And, and, it's, and it's even worse today than it was oh, a year yes. ago. Oh, yes. Well, not of that, but along with that is what I see as the feminization of, of Christianity. Uh, when I grew up, uh, you would never have heard it. Uh, because I grew up in the era when even Pentecostalism was just starting to catch on. And even then, you didn't have women usurping authority over men. Mm -hmm. Today, there are many ministries, quote unquote, that's on television and YouTube and all this other, that are women even claiming themselves to be apostles and claiming yeah. themselves to be pastors. Uh, we have ministries that have husband and wife teams as pastors. Yeah. Uh, Which is just opening that door and getting closer it is, to the door. And it is. And, and once we're out of here, Dan, uh, I'm convinced, the as we're going to talk about maybe next week, we're watching the movement for a one world religion just like we see the movement for the one world government yeah. in place for the Antichrist. The Bible says the uh, the bishop or the pastor yes. must be the husband of one wife. Now that's exactly what it says. That's what the Bible says. And of course, if you keep tampering with your Bibles, I guess you can finally find a way to make it say what you want it to yeah. say. And by the way, the changing and altering of the Bible is not anything new. Uh, I mean, even uh, they talked to Peter about uh, some of Paul's teaching said it's hard. And he said, well, not only that, but he said they're already resting the Scripture. Yeah. It's something they've always done. It goes done. all the way back to Genesis 3. Yeah. Hath God said. <laughs> Hath God said. Yeah. So the first thing that, that Luke puts in an order, because there's always been false teachers, but the closer you get to the coming of the Lord, uh, more of that is out there. Uh, when I was young growing up, Dan, you, you never heard anybody believe in anything, basically, other than a pre-tribulation rapture. Today... The idea is a mid-tribulation, it's a, it's a pre-wrath, it's a post, it's all over the place. So this thing of, of false teachers and false doctrines, the closer you get to the coming of the Lord, they're going to become more and more of this out there. And I don't know, uh, it, it's crazy what's happened to the prophecy world. Oh, yes. Let alone the rest of Christianity, but the prophecy world out there, has has lost their right. mind. I say this all the time, and I'm and I'm one of them. I'm, I'm in the prophecy <laughs> world. You are, but I believe God brought us here for such a time as this to well, try we, to bring some clarity, to try to bring us back to the Word of God. That's it. King James Bible. Absolutely. I I say this of the prophecy world. They're they're into fairy tales and, and fables, Greek mythology, yep. fables, fiction, sci-fi. Uh, uh, I mean, UFOs yes. flying around with angels, you know, with joystiction, yep. playing games in the sky. That's ridiculous. Yep. Uh, but I'm convinced this is part of the, the... The thing is, people need to understand that a falsehood or a, a false teaching or a false ministry is of no value if it doesn't have some truth in it. Yeah. And so this is, this is what's so subtle about it. If we don't check everything by the Scripture and run it through the lens of Scripture, it would be easy for even you and I to make the Bible yeah. say whatever we want to say. And you know this as well as I do, and we've both written on this, but uh, creation is in God's hands. Satan is not yes. a creator. Yes. And I say this all the time. Satan cannot create a blade of grass out in my field. No. Satan is a counterfeiter. He's a, he, he's a counterfeiter, but when you study the Exodus, 
uh, you, you discover in the Exodus some things that the devil does have a power mm -hmm. in the area of creation. Not the ability to create, but the ability to manipulate. Manipulate, yeah. Big difference. A big difference. And, and they're telling us that angels saw human yeah. women, came down yeah. and married them yeah. and had children. That means they had to have a seed, they had to be able yeah. to create life. But they can't do that with, without going outside of Scripture to finding some writing Greek outside. Mythology. Outside of Scripture, the Book of Enoch. Yes, yeah. So we're living in a time where, uh, as believers, uh, God's people, they need to get back into their Bible and let their Bible guide what they're yeah. listening and, and following. And folks, we're we're begging you to give us give us a hearing here. Uh, think about what we're talking about. People of people of people of prophecy ministries have. have gone into sci-fi, Greek mythology, talking about Thor being a fallen angel and a Nephilim. <laughs> no, Thor is a, fiction, a fictional character. He doesn't yeah, exist. Right. Never existed. And uh, Greek mythology. Get, we've got to get back to the Bible. We've got to get back to the truth. We've got to put away uh, science, falsely so-called, as Paul said. Yes. And we've got to get back to the truth. Um, Doc, let's stop right here and get it over with and, and yes. talk about <laughs> the ministry and the need here so that we can get right back to this. Amen. Uh, we are about two weeks out from the bill being due. Uh, you know, you all have watched us for a long time. About every three months, the big bill comes due for, uh, for, uh, for all the networks that we're on. And we are not there yet. We're not as bad as we were last quarter, but we're, we're not there yet. We don't have the money to pay the bill yet. But we've got about two weeks left. If you can help us, uh, we need you. We need you. And uh, pray, pray for us. We want, we want you to partner with us by, by praying. And, and uh, boy, keep the notes coming. Doc, we get emails yes. almost every day. We get letters in the mail. Uh, people send us checks and they'll put a note. Oh, we just love you guys. Thank you for yeah. using the King James Bible, stuff yeah. like that. Yes. Uh, boy, it means a lot to us to, to open up those notes and read those. Um, so the bill is coming due. If you can help in these last couple of weeks, uh, we, we still need several thousand dollars. And uh, God always does it, and I believe he's going to again. Amen. Uh, but we need your help. You can go to the website. You can hit the donate buttons up there. You can call the phone number. You can uh, donate over the phone. You can write the check and put it in the mail. The address, uh, I believe, is on the website. Um, and I think it scrolls by every now and then. But anyway, um, pray for our ministry here. We believe what we're doing is important. I believe that with all my soul. I believe this is very important what we're doing here, and I believe many of you uh, also agree with us there. And uh, so, God bless you all. Thank Amen. you, everyone that, that supports us and gives. We're totally listener, viewer supported. We have no, we have no outside uh, donors or people who uh, you know. We have no commercials, and uh, we operate by the gifts of God's people. And, uh, and we've uh, made it almost three years. Yes, uh, June 19th, I think. June 19th, I think, is our thrill. We're going to have some kind of big shindig on that. But we started with nothing, and we have virtually we nothing, nothing. But we made it this far because God's people yeah. have partnered and, uh, with us to help it's, us. It's a miracle. It is. Um, that, uh, that we're here. All right, well, let's, let's jump in. So let's go to the second thing yes. on the list, uh, Doc. And, uh and I think we kind of agree these are kind of in order on purpose, aren't they? There's, well, there's kind of an birth, order here. Birth pains, uh, are, they come in an order, yes. Yeah. And so the false teachers get real, real, real and boy, are we there. Yes. False teaching all, all over the networks, television, radio. I mean, if it's uh, bad now, you can only imagine what it's going to be like in the first half of the tribulation. Yeah, because they're all lost then. Yes. And uh, some of them are lost now. I'm convinced of that. And, uh, and so the second thing here, but when ye shall hear of wars and rumors, uh, wars and commotions, yeah. be not terrified, for these things must first come to pass, but then the end is not by and by. Then said the unto them, nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. He, he makes a difference there between wars and commotions because I think the CIA fact book tells us there's only been like 17 years of recorded history without some kind of regional war. Hmm. But uh, uh, we hear about it, and we've got a war going on in Ukraine and Russia, and uh, really, in reality, a lot of the nations of the world is involved in all of that. But World War One and World War II were different, where 
where nations and kingdoms align themselves with other nations and kingdoms. And as a result, uh, World War I brought about the Balfour Declaration, and Ezekiel 37 began to be fulfilled. Right, uh, Ezekiel's bones. Yep, bringing the Israel back into the, the land. The foundational things were put in place that yes. allowed them to... Be, then at the end of World War II... Uh, Israel becomes a nation again. Yeah. What's it doing? Well, God said, I'm going to bring them back. Uh, uh, in chapter 36, he said, I'm going to bring them back. And then in chapter 37, he said, this is the process. I'm going to bring them back uh, because he's getting ready because in chapter 38, he's got a battle to go with them. But anyway, uh, these wars were a part, I'm convinced, of bringing Israel back in for the fulfillment of Daniel's chapter 9, the last seven years of that prophecy. Yeah. And so those were birth pains, and that's why I think you find the word but put in there. And uh, I, I think our English translation is very important. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to go to the next one. Uh, Mrs. Goodwin, do we have my uh, Great End Time Distraction book available? She'll put that up while I'm reading this next one, uh, because if, if you just heard us talk about the Nephilim and the fallen angels, if you don't have my book, The Great End Time Distraction, you need to get that. It will forever end the controversy for you on the, the sons of God and the daughters of men in Genesis 6. It will settle that for you like it has for me. And a very important book. She'll put that up in just a minute. So, Doc, the next one on the list, yeah. number three. Right. And great earthquakes shall be in diverse places. My. Well, uh, what we're seeing is is more and more earthquakes every day. No day goes by without an earthquake somewhere. But the number of 3.0 is almost off the chart. 6.0 and greater is off the chart. Um, people need to understand that the system that measures uh, the intensity of an earthquake, uh, each digit is double the digit before it. In other words, wow. if it's 6.1, it's twice as great as 6.0. Wow, I didn't know that. So when you get to 8 point and above, or you get to 9, recently we just had one in Turkey. It was 7 something, wasn't it? It was 8, I believe it was round 8. Maybe it was. And what you had was almost 40,000 or more people died in that terrible thing. A few years ago, there was a 9.0 uh, that moved geographically, moved the island of Japan eight geographical feet. I mean, it moved the entire wow. nation. And so, uh, uh, but the interesting thing, out, and you can research this, and, and folks can research it, that since Israel has been back in its land since 1918, what you discover is 10 of the greatest earthquakes ever on record have happened since Israel has been back in their land. And I think you meant to say 1948. No, back when they began oh, in the Balfour, Balfour Declaration. Okay. So since 18... Seven, since 19 and 18, 10, now it would be 11, of the greatest earthquakes that have ever taken place have been since Israel is back in their land. Mm. He said these would be end time markers. So that tells me that what we're seeing... Uh, the Bible says the earth groaneth and travail awaiting its day of redemption. Yeah. Well, in chapter 16 of the book of Revelation, the final vile wrath is an earthquake so great that there'll be no more mountains and no more islands. And so that's going to be it's on gonna, the Richter scale. Yeah, I don't think it'll be measured wow. uh, beyond. But yes, we're watching uh, an increase in that. So the fourth one here is famines. My goodness. You're hearing about it every day. Uh, you don't hear as much about it in the American media, but if you'll get over into Europe and get into some of the media, you begin to realize that even in many Western cultures in Europe, they're already facing great shortage. Even you, yeah. go to, you go to the simple store of Walmart in our world today, and I promise you, you can see things on the front of the cell. You ought to look behind it. Most of the shelves are empty behind the yeah. two or three boxes or whatever's up there. And let's remember the Bible talks about in the last days will be a famine of the words of God. And the famine of the word of God. So, but, uh, but what we're seeing is a precursor of the black horse rider. Yeah. You know, you got the white horse of the Antichrist, then you got the red horse of the wars. Uh, and then the black horse is inflation and famine. Yeah. And this is where we're headed. You're watching the precursors. Right now, they're even telling you uh, 
in America. You've got just a few months and you're going to start seeing great hardship. Yeah. And we have recommended on this show many times, folks, for you to prepare. Yes. You know, Proverbs says, the, the, the prudent man seeth the evil afar off, yes. and he hideth himself. There's, that applies to all areas of life, uh, whether it be a storm cloud and a, a hurricane coming, or whether it be a financial crash that you see off in the horizon. Hey, it's not so far now. Uh, no. In fact, uh, uh, I think the next, uh, next week we're going to have a, a YouTube video about some of that. Uh, bank crashes and uh, there's going to be food shortages, all kinds of uh, medical uh, uh, prescription shortage. That's already here. Uh, doc, I had to get a prescription and uh, my doctor said, oh, we can't send you to Walmart. They're out of it. They don't have any. And that's it just was that, And that was an ordinary medicine. Yeah. Yes. And uh, that, my antenna went up. I said, yeah. hmm. Well, 90%, if I remember right, 90% of our medication comes from China. Yeah, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. Yes, yeah. but pe uh, but uh, that brings you to the next one, pestilence. Okay, and uh, we've already been through a couple of years of <laughs> pestilence. Yeah, yeah. and uh, whether it's man-made or not, that'd be for another subject. Uh, but uh, uh, we're getting ready to see not just the kind of pe we think of pestilence in the Bible being an infestation of uh, uh, of an insect or something, and that still takes place. Uh, because if you lived in Africa, uh, if you didn't have your one acre or so that you were growing continual food on, you wouldn't be able to eat. Yeah. And uh, you, you take a, an infestation of, of grasshoppers and they come through. Uh, and locusts, did you realize that in 15 minutes they could take away a whole year's worth of food for that family? Yeah. But we're living in a world where pestilences it may be more instead of insects of that nature, it may be more of a man-made pandemic. Mm -hmm. And even now, our own federal government is trying to get in their budget money for pandemic. I thought we were out of it. But anyway, I think they might know some things you don't know. We're so far in debt, and, and, and they're just pouring more of it on, yeah. and banks are starting to fold. And, uh it's course, all. It's a week before this show is going to yeah. air. Who knows where the banks? Are going but to that be. brings you to the next point, and that's fearful sights. All right. That is a fearful sight. Yeah. You you mentioned earlier when we were having breakfast today um, about people going to a bank, hearing that there's a problem, to get their money, and they're met by the police. And that's what Tucker Carlson said. He yeah. said people went to that bank. Yep. to get their money out, and the police were called because yep. the bank was fearful that there was going to be violence because they, they didn't have no money. Didn't have it, and um, that was a fearful. And here's the thing. Of course, we've got a set in here, and what everybody sees is what you see right now. Uh, if they took the camera back about four or five feet, and you could see the clutter over here and, the, and another set over here and all this other stuff. And so media has the ability through technology to stage things, to make it look bigger or worse, or even make it look like something that's not even real, yeah. to convince you. Remember back last summer, all the Antifa and Black Lives Matters and all this stuff? Yeah. What you saw on the media, the greater majority of it was all staged. And you could take one block area, set you some cars on fire, get you some people dressed up out here, and you could convince the world that the whole 45 blocks is like this. Yeah. And so we're living in a time where the power of media with the new types of technology, fearful sights can easily be portrayed upon not just America but on the entire world. And we saw that, we saw that with Hollywood. I mean, way back yes. in the 40s and the 50s. I mean, I remember the Jimmy Stewart movies. I remember they'd, they'd zoom in on his face and he'd have the scared yeah. look. And, and, I mean, they have the yeah. way, to, they, they know so how they, to do that. And with technology today, well, they could literally make something up that's not even real. And even technologically, you cannot detect it. Now, there's one more on the list. We, we, don't have, we have a few minutes left, Let's, so we're going to get all these. The, the number seven on the list is, is gr and great signs shall there be from heaven. Yes. And... 
that could be more than one thing. I, it could certainly be God's moving of the instruments of heavenly the bodies. Planets and uh, yes. things up there. Uh, I mean, he put it in Genesis chapter 1, uh, at particularly chapter 4, or fourth day of creation, verse 14 and on, he talks about putting them in their ordinance or ordained them and in that they position. they were for signs and for seasons. Yes. And so God does use that. And according to the first chapter uh, of First Corinthians, uh, God uses signs of that nature for the Jews. But uh, uh, so it could be heavenly bodies. Yeah. And we, we hear, I saw a thing yesterday that uh, the earth is going to be hit by 2046 by this huge asteroid and all of this kind of stuff. And uh, there are people that are saying, well, really those aren't telescopes out there taking pictures of the far distance of our universe. Well, it really is. But I think the fearful sights or the great signs from heaven are what we're seeing stage being set now for the middle of the tribulation that's coming. Right now they've got cameras on satellites that can read your, can, can read your license plate. Yeah. And so uh, uh, I know Elon Musk has, and I have it in the DVD, uh, he has almost three-fourths of all of the low-altitude satellites that's in space are under his, his space program. And uh, Starlink. And we have, he has 5G radiation or uh, cell phone network available yeah. everywhere from all over planet Earth. 600 of those have been retrofitted with laser beams. And so when your Bible says in the, in the 13th chapter of Revelation that the second beast, I believe that's a false prophet, right. to convince the world to worship and to take part of the mark of the beast system, he'd be able to call far from heaven. I used to wonder how that would be, but now I have no doubt how easy it would be. So these are all things that yep. the, I think they're, we're seeing the precursors of them, and during the tribulation they're going to get worse and worse. Well, Doc, I believe you. it's an awesome DVD, 40 wonderful slides. This is going to be a help to people, and it's going to, it's going to give them seven indicators that we're at the end times yes. right now. I mean, we're, we're the, there. We are there, and it's just a matter of whether it's this week, next week, a year from now, six months. The thing that's important now. for our folks, be ready. If you're not, if you're not, seconds, if you're not saved, please receive Christ as your Savior. Change your destiny from hell to heaven. Jesus has done everything needed to be. You just need to receive Christ as your Savior. If you need some help with that, contact us, and we'll be glad to help you with it. Yeah, sure will. And uh, and if you are saved, get right with the Lord today. Amen. Get your life, get your life in order. Get your home in order. Get your children in order. Get your neighbors saved. Uh, if we're at the end of this thing, let's not just sit on a swing and, and, and look up and wait for the trumpet to sound. Let's do something. And I always tell people, I want to go out of here with a bang. How about you? Well, until next time, keep your eyes on them skies.